Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today we're going to be working on some proofs on triangle inequalities in our lesson in geometry. Learning how to write two column proofs in geometry is essential in learning geometry because this is teaching us how to think critically and analytically. And that's what we're going to be working on in our lesson for today. And we're going to start with this figure. And in this quadrilateral, we are seeing that we need to show that the measurement of angle one is less than the measurement of angle four. So in every proof, it's always easy or it's one of my best practices to draw the figure and start from there and check the given information so that I'll be able to write my two column proof a little easier. So let's start with our first figure, which is a quadrilateral. And again, it doesn't matter if your figure is a little bit crooked. The important thing is all the information that is given in our figure is in your little sketch. So in this case, we know that we have a diagonal inside the quadrilateral or a trapezoid that gives us two triangles. And in our first statement, we know that AB is congruent to CD. AB is congruent to CD because it is given in our information from our proofs. So we always start with the given information that we have and we are going to write line segment AB is indeed congruent to line segment CD. And we know that because this is the given information. So this is our statements and this will be our reason. And now that we have our first given information, let's uh, see that we have AC or line segment AC here and we know that if we split these two triangles we'll be able to create a congruent line segment because AC is common to ABC and CDA. So we can write AC is congruent to AC using the reflexive property. Don't mind my handwriting because I know it's a little bit ugly, but I'm going to show you later on in our recap all the statements that we're working on today. And the next thing that we can show is that line segment BC, line segment BC is greater than or less than rather line segment AD, not because it looks like that this is longer than BC, it's because it's given in our information. So we're going to add that in our proof. So we have line segment BC less than line segment AD because it is given. And since we know that BC is smaller than AD, we can now show that the measurement of angle 1, this is angle 1, compared to angle 4, and angle 4 is right here, we can say that angle 4 is indeed bigger than angle 1. And in this case, we know that the last statement is that we're able to show that the measurement of angle 1 is less than the measurement of angle 4 because of the converse of the hinge theorem. Because in this case, we are given the side and not the angle. That's why we concluded that the measurement of angle 4 is bigger than the angle right here, which is angle 1, and we are able to show that indeed the measurement of angle 1 is less than the measurement of angle 4 using the converse of the hinge theorem. So this is how we write a two-column proof given a complex figure. And again, it's a lot easier when we are drawing our figure and we started with the 
given information that we have. So we know that AB is congruent to CD because it's given. And we went with AC, which is common to triangle BCA and CDA. So using the reflexive property, we're able to show that they are congruent. And for our third line, we then use the information that is given to us, which is BC is greater than AD, or the top line segment is smaller than the bottom line segment. And with this, we're able to show that the measurement of angle 1 is indeed less than the measurement of angle 4 because of the hinge or the converse of the hinge theorem, also known as the side-side-side inequality theorem. So this is how we show our two column proofs. So let's keep the ball rolling and prove that FM is greater than AR in this two or in this figure right here, multiple triangles, not just two triangles. And again, we're going to start with our sketch. Even though our sketch is not too perfect, it doesn't matter because what matters is that we're able to visualize the figure that we are working on. And we are able to show and see and strategize how we're going to work with our triangles or proofs. So AFM. This is our triangle, FMA, and we have line segment FR right here. So in our first triangle, we know that FA is congruent to MR, and FA is this line segment, and MR is this line segment. So let's start with that statement, that FA is congruent to MR, and we know that because it is a given information. So we know that it's congruent. And we also know, using this figure, that we have a line segment right here that can be separated and can be found in the two triangles that we have in our figure. So now we can use FR is congruent by itself. And we need to show this using the reflexive property to know that FR is congruent to the corresponding parts of triangle AFR and MFR. And with this, we can now show that the measurement of angle 1 is greater than the measurement of angle 2, and in this Form. This is angle 1 and this is angle 2 and we're able to show that because of the interior angle inequality theorem because if this is our triangle, if we extend this leg right here, we know from the uh, um, exterior angle theorem that angle 1 is the same as the sum of angle F or angle 2 and angle A right here. So that means angle 1 will always be bigger with this interior angles that we are seeing in triangle FAR. So we are going to write it down as the measurement of angle 1 is greater than the measurement of angle 2 because of the exterior angle inequality theorem. And now that we're able to show that, we can now show that FM is greater than AR. And where is FM? FM is right here, and AR is right here. So let's use a different color so that you will see that FM and AR are not congruent, but FM is greater than AR using the hinge theorem because this as we know for the hinge theorem the bigger angle holds the bigger side in two triangles with two congruent sides which is in this case fr and a f and a f to r m so here we're able to show that we're able to prove that line segment fm 
is indeed greater than AR. So again, with a recap, because in my handwriting, some of you are seeing a very ugly handwriting, but we know that in our recap right here, we'll be able to show that we started with our given statement, which is FA congruent to MR. And we went with the reflexive property of FR so that we can show that if we separated those, those two triangles, FR will be congruent to the two triangles. And with this, we'll be able to show that the measurement of angle, angle 1 is greater than a measurement of angle 2 using the exterior angle inequality theorem, which in turn help us to use the hinge theorem because we know that in the hinge theorem, the angle opposite the bigger angle holds the longer side in comparison to the other triangle which shares congruent or two congruent sides. So with this triangle FRA and FMR can now be used so that we can say that side FM is greater than side AR using the hinge theorem or the SSS or SAS inequality theorem. So that's the proof for this second problem. And for the last proof or uh, statements that we're going to prove, it's going to be a little longer, but again, we always start with our drawing. And in this case, we need to show that line segment AB this is line segment AB, is longer than line segment ED. Now, by just looking at our figure, we can see that mm, they look quite congruent. But with our proof, we'll be able to show that AB is indeed longer than ED. So again, we'll start with our drawing, and that's what we're going to be using here. And our drawing is a quadrilateral. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E. This is our midpoint and this is our triangle. And we know that in this given information, the measurement of EAC, where is EAC? EAC is right here. EAC is congruent to AEC, AEC. So that's going to be our first statement that we can write that the measurement of angle EAC is congruent to the measurement of angle AEC. And we know that because it's given. So that's a given information that we know. And we can now proceed to the second statement. And we can sh show that AC is congruent to EC because it forms an isosceles triangle. But what properties or what theorem in this triangle are we going to use to show that AC is congruent to EC? We're going to show... We know that the definition of an isosceles triangle is that the two sides are congruent, but in this case, we're able to show that the two sides are congruent because of its angle. So with that, we're using its converse. So we're using the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. And now that we have this statement, we're able to show that they are congruent. Now we can turn our attention to our midpoint right here. And that midpoint, of course, is a given information. So we can show that C is the midpoint of line segment BD because it's given. And with that, we can show that BC is congruent to CD. So this line right here can be separated and we know that they're congruent because of this point which is our midpoint. So now we can write that BC is congruent to CD and we're able to show that because that is the definition 
of a midpoint. And now that we know that BC is congruent to CD, we can now put our attention to the last given information that we have, wherein the measurement of BCA, BCA, this is BCA, and the measurement of DCE, DCE, so DCE, so this measurement right here, the angle of BCA is greater than DCE according to the given. So we can write it out that the measurement of angle BCA is greater than the measurement of angle DCE because it's given. And with that, we can now use the hinge theorem because we can now show that since this angle is bigger than this angle, that means AB is longer than ED, which we are trying to prove in our statement. So now, with our statement, we can show that AB is indeed greater than ED using the hinge theorem. Let's write it here. Hinge theorem. And again, forgive me for my handwriting, but we're going to have a recap of this proof. So to prove or show your proof, we always start with the given information. So we know that this angle and that angle are congruent because they are given. And we also know that using the isosceles triangles theorem, using its converse, we're able to show that AC, excuse me, is congruent to EC. And now that we're able to show the isosceles triangle, we can now focus on the midpoint that is given in this problem, which is C. So this is given, and with this, we're able to show that BC is congruent to CD using the definition of a line segment. And since we know that those lines are congruent, we can also show that their lengths are also the same or equal. And we can say that BC is equal to CD because congruent segments have equal lengths, which I did not include in my proof, but you can add it in your two column proof as well, giving us the opportunity to show that the measurement of angle BCA is greater than the measurement of DCE because it's given and now that we know that they are not the same or not congruent, we can use the hinge theorem to show that AB or line segment AB is bigger than line segment ED, even though it doesn't look like it. But with our geometric proof, we're able to show that AB is indeed greater than ED using the hinge theorem. And again, practice is what you will need to be able to uh, gain confidence in writing two column proofs similar to what we just did today. So for your number bender challenge for the day, you're going to be working on your algebra and your hinge theorem to show the possible values of x in your angle for this particular triangle. And you'll be able to solve this using the hinge theorem and of course a little bit of help with algebra. So comment in down below for the inequalities or limits or intervals that we need for this answer. And this is our lesson on uh, writing proofs or two column proofs for triangle inequality. And I know that this is a challenging uh, skill to learn in geometry, but the reward is huge because this will help us to, again, think critically and analytically, which is something that we need to hone when we are working with problems in mathematics similar to what we just did today. This is Dr. E and see you again next time. Bye.